Well, I'm back in the studio. I had, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to see it, a little bit of oral surgery. So I was out of the studio for a few days. But I'm starting to feel a little bit better. So I'm getting super excited. We'll be leaving in about gosh, two weeks to go to Albuquerque to the powwow, which is going to be super exciting. And this is one of the last paintings that I'm going to bring to the powwow. So I've done some work, but I'm still applying my glazes onto the surface. in order to build up the depth. I was talking to a friend of mine because when I was getting the mouth surgery, so I'm getting an implant without giving too much gory details, but I was having such a hard time painting and creating because my body was in so much pain. So I had to just surrender to not painting and be okay with that. I don't know if anyone else has that same problem, but I was tending to get really hard on myself that I was not painting. Usually there's not one day that goes by that I don't have a paintbrush in my hand in some way. So I found it really challenging to just, believe it or not, just take a break. I'd be curious if anyone else feels the same way. So the mix that I'm using right now is Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine Blue. I really enjoy the subtleties of neutral colors, like earth tone colors. I enjoy bright colors too, but out of everything, I think the earth tones tend to resonate with me more. But it really depends on the mood. The reason I chose this background for the rabbit is their tendency in nature is to sort of blend in. You know, they've done really well with their ability to um, conceal themselves while they're in nature and it's, you know, to be less obvious to predators. I go up to Wilbur Hot Springs a lot and you see tons of jackrabbits. I mean, when I say tons, there's never a time I've gone up there where I've not seen a jackrabbit or multiple jackrabbits. And they're super, you know, fun to watch. They really give you the ability to reflect inwards. And you can see them all year round.
So I'm applying the paint really lightly. Like if I were to like come up with a pressure of my paintbrush, my hands are hardly holding the brush. Like it's pretty light. It's just it's just sitting there sort of resting. Tomorrow I'm going to work on a few pieces that I'm going to finish up for the New Mexico show. Like all the painting is done, but I need to apply another coat of resin. So that's going to be interesting tomorrow. I'm going to try to do a video at the same time. The thing with the resin, it's a lot, um, a lot, uh, how do you say, like a slower process for me. I feel like I can be in my resin room for hours and not even realize that it, it's been hours that I've been in there. The time goes by so quickly in my mind, but the actual time is just so um, long, which is not a bad thing. You just kind of get enveloped in the creation And that'll be the first video that I'm going to share where I'm actually applying resin to a surface. On video, not just in general. Live and in person. So I'm adjusting the amount of brown in my glaze and my amount of blue to give me some variety. And it really starts to give it the sense of being three-dimensional. I think I'm going to try to paint on my snail painting too. It's been a while for that one as well. You don't realize, but when you're running your business, so yes, we all want to be artists, but there's a business aspect to it unless you hire an agent, but it takes time to do all of it. I mean, you can't do everything at once. It's really challenging. And here comes Linksy, coming for a visit. Boop, there he goes. <laughs> butt chat, oh no. <laughs> Get your little butt out of there. But it takes time. Um, what I've learned to do is a lot, a certain amount of time every day for the non-creative work, I call it. The, you know, the labor that has to be done, whether that's emails, um, newsletter, publicity, applying for shows, I mean, you name it. It's, it's 24 hours of work. But the beauty is, is once you're doing it. It really doesn't feel like work to me. It's just like something that has to be done. And I tend to just do it until my brain starts to hurt. I'm like, oh no. I get like a brain overload of um, too much information. Like right now I'm working on publishing my first book and that's taking a lot of my energy in a good way, but it's just taking a lot of energy because I'm learning a whole new career at the same time and I'm self-teaching rather than taking a class. So I've 
watched videos, blogs, you name it, in order to pursue my publishing career. So I'm limiting the movement of my hand in order to create the short strokes of rabbit fur. So I'm not using the full range of motion, I'm just doing these short little strokes. In order to give the impression of fur. And immediately when I increase the pressure, I can create a shadow spot that's a little bit more dramatic. What's really fun about the video is you can see it transform pretty quickly. Like right in front of you. But just by adding those glaze colors, it totally pops. So I'm trying to get very um, wispy on these edges so it feels like rabbit fur would actually feel like super soft and airy almost. I mean, if you've ever touched a bunny, their fur is just unbelievably soft. So I'm going to do about six more minutes on this one, and then I'll go to the snail. I was walking Lynx outside on Sunday, and I could see all the snail um, shells where they've molted. It looks like they've gotten bigger shells for the year. But it's just so wild that they actually shed their snail. 
actually shed their snail home. It's kind of cute. So I'm holding the paintbrush pretty far, like I'm almost at the edge of my um, paintbrush. And I'm just trying to get like a looser effect. I could still be accurate because I'm using a liner brush, but I'm trying to get a almost like a very soft dry brush feel. So, and what I mean by that is when you hold the paintbrush further away, you actually have less control and less pressure. But you can still apply the material. And it's a little bit more of a delicate technique, but the effect is pretty nice. And then where I'm going to get nice and tight is going to be where the rabbit foot meets the rice paper, which is right here. So this is the rice paper, and this is the hind leg. So I want to be a little bit more definitive with my shading and I'm being sure not to get it on the rice paper but I almost want the bunny's foot to disappear into the foreground which is the rice paper some resin some ink and some glitter and when I say glitter it's not like glitter that you would get at Michael's. It's almost like a metallic, um, how do you say, almost like um, shavings rather than glitter. Because when you take regular glitter, like say it's a purple glitter, and you embed it into something, and then you try to sand it, it will eventually turn um, an aluminum color. So they basically put some sort of glaze coat in order to make the color change. And I've learned that by actually having it happen to me. So I used a copper glitter in a painting of mine. And when I sanded it, it all turned silver, which was okay, but it wasn't what I was expecting for the final outcome. But that's where happy accidents can be um, fun sometimes. So you can see how this is starting to get like rounded and it's the hip is pushing back because I've shaded so much. And really, again, it's just building up the layers and there's that little tail. So I'm going to take Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine Blue, but I'm not going to mix any glaze into it. And I'm going to work that hair of the tail. And then I'll let the dark part dry and then come back in the opposite side with the white. But I'll probably have to put a few more layers there because I really want that to be pushed behind the hind leg. And I'm really enjoying this spot. And I'm going to just darken that up a little bit. So, But I'm going to add some glaze to the same color. And I'm just going to lightly shade it. Because I don't want it to be too dramatic but I want it to have that feeling of 
the bunny being round and being separate from the foreground, even though the foreground is abstract. So immediately you could see that um, rounding. And then I'm going to do the same right here. It really is as if the painting tells me what to do. Like, sure, I have the idea, and my idea is never formulated until I see it. So basically, I'm doing my backgrounds. I might do five to ten different backgrounds at one time, but not know what I'm putting on the surface until I actually see the painted completed in my head. And then I go to the surface and make it happen. So we're still getting that rounded feeling here. I'm going to have to lighten it up a little bit, but I love the shadow right there. And I'm going beyond my time, but I can't help myself. So I'm going to take some titanium white, a little bit of the shadowy color that I made using ultramarine blue and Van Dyke brown. And I'm going to rework this and just break it up a little bit. And because the titanium white is a glaze, it's going to allow those darker colors to pop through a little. I mean, a bunny's fur is sort of variegated, where one piece of fur, like a little piece of hair, can consist of more than one color or value. So this is sort of how to achieve it by cutting your color and like glazing on top. So that really gives him a rounded feel. And I'm going to carry it all the way around. to the side of the body. So this is sort of the front and then this becomes the side. So I'm going to leave this in shadow and highlight this a little bit more. And I'm going to break up this a little bit. So this is a new experience for me too, doing the videos. And what's kind of interesting, and I'm finding myself doing this, and I'm curious if other people do the same thing, like I'm actually looking through the video in order to assess my painting. And that's kind of funny, just picking that up right now. It's almost giving me a whole different um, way of seeing the painting. When I was in college, it's, it's sort of reminding me of when we would take a mirror and actually look at our artwork through a mirror, like, but backwards. So we would look at it and see how the composition was working for us with a mirror. And this sort of feels the same way. It's like, it's a different approach.
And if you remember, I was mentioning in an earlier video that the texture on here is pretty coarse. So I've actually decided to leave that and not mess with it and not try to fill in those little holes that are being created because of the texture. I'm just like letting it assist me while I'm painting. All right, so I'm going to cut it short at 30 minutes, I promise. Otherwise, I could just keep going and going. I really love the ability to create the layers. It really provides like a depth that I don't think you can achieve when you're just painting in an opaque manner, especially with acrylics because they can look a little plastic at times. So this really gives it a different level Well, I'm going to stop right about here. Thank you for viewing my channel. Please subscribe. If you, there's something that you were curious about how to paint, let me know in the comments below, and um, maybe we'd have to do a feature. So thanks again. Stay tuned for the snail coming up shortly, and I'll see you soon.